Alright, sorry it's been so long since the last main video. I have been uploading little shorts intermittently that show small progress updates. But the main thing that I've been working on is still Chain Playground. And the last update that I released, the last big one, gave us this new really cool level browser. And there were a lot of reasons that I needed to make a new one. One of the main ones being that the old one was falling apart. It was very buggy and unstable. And it was presenting a lot of problems after I made the feature that caused the game to stop and give you an error message whenever an error occurred. The game would constantly stop just randomly while you were in the level browser because it was buggy. And so I replaced it, and along with replacing it, I decided to give the game a new UI theme. I wanted to give it a dark mode because, honestly, I think it looks way better, like, for this game and just in general. But along with changing the level browser, I also changed the network infrastructure. And by that I mean I changed how I was organizing things with the Game Jolt API, and also I changed how I was interacting with and interfacing with the Game Jolt API. So that was a lot of code that was rewritten, but after that was done, it was a huge relief because I had a brand new level browser, a brand new awesome look for the game, and it says the pre-9 update is available, but the only reason it'll ever say that is because the versions don't match, and since they're just strings, it has no concept of which one's newer. But that's not important. The important thing is, I released this update, it's been slated to happen for a long time, and it finally happened, and the game looks and feels a lot better because of it. But after that, I continued working on bug fixing because there were still more pretty bad bugs. But then I eventually got to the point where I realized another system had to be completely redone. And that was the state control system. If I go into the level builder right now and I load some random level, let's say this one, that wasn't really random, I just load it every time. Um, you'll notice that every single object that is in this level is being shown. Even if it's not even supposed to be visible at all. And that's just to make editing and building levels easier. And when you're in a level, like for example if I go ahead and start this level, um, let's see if I can manage this. Okay, I did. So you can see that that moving platform started out moving and now, actually it started out not moving and I hit a trigger causing it to move and now it's back to not moving. So its initial state is obviously not moving and we can see that there are barriers that would have to be out of the way in order to complete the level. So those, for example, start as shown. And the way I did state control before was really crude. A lot of just send message stuff and just relying on scripts on the objects to handle it themselves. Um, but that caused a lot of bugs and I eventually got fed up with it and I'm like, it would look so much more elegant if the state control system was nice and modular and was based on classes and I actually used object-oriented programming to its full extent. So I rewrote the state control system and it almost worked first try. Almost. Of course it didn't, but I did create a lot more bugs in doing so. So I finally ironed those out and then I was to the point where finally the new state control system is done this is going to be amazing. And so I'm like, okay, I'm almost ready to release it. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. I've worked, I've been working on themes. I'm going to get to that later, but I have to talk about this first. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to release it. But then I thought, wait a minute. Every single update I've done has messed up something with the tutorial. And the reason that is, is that the tutorials are completely separate standalone scenes. However, Every single level that you play, whether from online or from your computer, or whether you're just making a level, is all in this one scene called Level Editor. And it should be more appropriately called Level Sandbox, because it's really the environment that levels run in. But I made this long before I had any concept that that's how things would work, so the legacy name persists. But anyway... Because there's this one central hub that controls how everything works, 
obviously a lot of things interface with it, and so a lot of things now have dependencies on the level sandbox. And finally, after changing the state control system, the nodes referenced it too, like fully referenced it in order to function. Which means that the second level in the um, tutorial no longer functions without the level sandbox. And I knew this was eventually going to become a problem. I'd known it for a long time, actually. So I had already kind of planned, well, another thing in 0.5 is I'm going to migrate all the tutorial levels to the level sandbox and make them run inside there. And so I started working on that. But there's a problem. The functionality and game mechanics you get in the level sandbox are just the ones you get. You can't natively do the things that the tutorial used to do, like um, being able to figure out what you're aiming at, being able to control the flow of the level based on what you're doing, being able to annotate things, being able to monitor what inputs you're doing. You can't natively do that with the tools you're given with the level editor. So I thought, there are two ways to go about this. One is to just transfer the scripts over and just activate them when it's in tutorial mode. Now, that would have been the most straightforward, simple, and efficient way to do it. But there's one problem. That is lame and boring and no fun. So I thought, okay, script it. Not like C-sharp Unity script it. Like, custom scripting language that runs user scripts. Why that? Well, because it's fun. I've never done anything like that before. And lately, Chain Playground has been my opportunity to learn a whole bunch of new programming concepts. And I was already, at one point, trying to make a custom scripting language, and so I thought, I'll just borrow the lexer and parser from that. And the syntax would have been really close to C-sharp, but with keywords and stuff that were based on JavaScript. But then I thought, holy crap, I am heavily over-engineering this. So, before I got too far and made a horrible mistake, I switched over to Lua. It was really simple. I just downloaded a library called Moonsharp and just imported it into my Unity project, and it just works. And that's amazing. And it actually wasn't very hard to figure out how to actually get it to affect stuff in my game either. And so, that is what I will demonstrate next. Well, actually, first, let's go to Visual Studio. This is a Lua script. The syntax is uh, devoid of, um, what do you call it? Well, a lot of things. There's no curly brackets for blocks. There's no semicolons to end lines. Instead, you have actual words like end and then. And, uh, well, that's about it, as far as I know. I, I just started Lua, like, yesterday. Um, so that was a little weird to get used to, but... I, I eventually got the hang of it. I, I think it's fine. I would have preferred a C-sharp like screen, or C-sharp like syntax, but this this is fine. So let me exit out of here. Let's uh, go to the tutorial, and it immediately redirects me to this level right here. And also, you might hear music and see water and all sorts of new things. Um, I might get to that later, or if this video ends up being too long, it may just be a separate video. There are a bunch of videos that I want and need to make. But anyway, the point is... Yeah, I just got some debug logs, and I've got this little thing that's urging me to press tab. So if I press tab... Info! The game produced the following message. Latched onto moving platform. So if you notice, this is actually the little crash log box that you get. So that's another thing. Um, errors and stuff like that no longer stop the game. They just bring up a little toast right here that tells you to press tab and you get to see what it is without it blocking gameplay, which honestly I should have done that from the start, but I, I just made it something that would be like a really simple quick fix at the time. And now you can close it or you can go to the main menu if something really devastating is happening. Um, and of course it also not only tells you about like errors and exceptions, but also about warnings and locks. So you can see that um, it plays a sound whenever something happens. It's got a special sound for logs, for warnings, and for errors. The errors are like this very um, sharp um, stab. Where, what's something I can do to trigger an error? There we go. 
press F3 plus C, and F3 brings up a debug menu. F3 plus C is a way to just throw an error just so you can see what happens. If I go ahead and press tab, yeah, un unhandled exception, user triggered crash. Um, so yeah, I changed the way errors work, and I've got a Lua script that is that has event functions that are being called from events in my game running code in a text file on my computer, which is, like, awesome. This is going to make the tutorial migration process a lot more fun. It has already been a lot more fun already, but this is just cool. And another thing that I addressed while I was at it was this. You notice that when I, like, get up close to the moving platform, like when I get within range, I actually lock like I do with solid objects. Used to, you would just bounce around, because I guess when I was writing the hookshot code, I couldn't come up with a better solution for moving objects than to just get you close enough. But, I mean, it, w it was a pretty obvious solution, just use a fixed joint and joint myself to the object. I don't know why I didn't think of that at the time. But it was several years ago. <laughs> but yeah, now that's fixed, which is cool. Um, you may have noticed that while I was messing around in the levels earlier. But there's still the issue of, uh, I don't think this is going to work here. That moving platform is not high enough above the ground. However, speaking of, look at that. Particle effect and a splash. Like, you notice the waves do the ripple thing? I had a lot of fun with that. Like, I've been writing more shaders recently, and I've actually gotten to the point where I can just make this water shader. And it, I'm really proud of it. It actually turned out really awesome. And you may have also noticed that the lava shader was different. But anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent again. Main menu. Uh, let's let's find a level where I could... Uh... Launchers and elevators works. So, let's go up here. And I'm not going to go through the main level. That takes forever. There we go. Wait, is it... Oh! That's interesting. That script is still running. Yeah, okay, I'm still very much in the process of working on the tutorial thing, so that might get annoying. So if I scroll down, yeah, I still bounce when fully extended like this, and, well, now I'm caught on something. But, yeah, so that's another thing that I need to fix, is the bouncing when you're fully extended. There's the splash effect for the lava, and the cool new lava shader. Had a lot of fun working on that, too. It was mostly just copy and paste some code and tweak some stuff from the water shader. But I still think it looks really good. Also, I guess I'll just keep talking about the lava shader. If I go to a level like Lava Spikes, um, which is an awesome level, but the lava just didn't look as good. Because it was all just... What is that? Has that always been there? I don't think that's always been there. Yeah, that has not always been there. What is... Huh. Okay, well, I'm I'm finding a lot of very weird things in this video. Um, anyway, you notice that the lava actually looks contiguous because the effect is not based on UV coordinates, it's based on world coordinates. So that's cool. And it's 3D noise, so it's coherent across uh, edges and corners. But... I think that's all I have for this video for now. I'm gonna go finish working with the tutorial figure out why there's a giant lava obelisk in this level and I'll get back to you when there's more progress updates so uh thanks for watching and bye